。然后，嗯，上次我们讨论关于 Rawls's theory of economic justice， 我们会继续讨论。呃，当然 ，Rawls 最重要的，呃，贡献就是讨论平等的问题。但是平等的问题，一方面很抽象，另一方面很具体。为什么今天我们觉得男女平等？我们也会讨论这个问题 ，OK？ 然后下个礼拜，我估计我们可以讨论一些什么是合理的等级、正义的等级 （just hierarchy）。我觉得荀子这方面是最有影响力的学者。So um, today, because the topics were written mainly in English. So I will speak mainly in English, and next week when we look at Xunzi, we will speak mainly in Chinese. 当然，讨论的时候可以用中文都行，好吗 ？Um. So to remind you, what was so important about John Rawls's theory of justice? Two things. One is that it was a huge, very systematic. And rigorously argued argument. Okay, that's rare and it's difficult to do well. And he did it brilliantly. That's one thing. And the other thing is that we have many desirable values, right? Liberty, freedom, and so on, and equality. How do you rank them? 怎么排序这些价值观？这个问题是非常重要的。He provided a theory that allowed us to rank different values in cases of conflict. Okay, think about politics. Almost always, it involves prioritizing certain values and certain goods. We can't do everything, right? Right. We're always limited by our time, by our resources,、um, by our intelligence. So we have to decide. What should be? If we are in government, we have to decide what should be our priority. And Rawls's theory of justice provides some guidance as to how to prioritize certain values in cases of conflict.、Um, <coughs> another great achievement about his theory, as mentioned last time, is that he could. It wasn't, of course, it was very original, but it wasn't just an original piece of work. He could draw on the best of what other, sometimes competing theories had to provide. So, from anarchism, he took on the insight that sometimes the government can be wrong, and sometimes citizens can disobey. What are those conditions of disobedience? He provides a very rigorous answer to that, which we won't discuss today. But it's a hugely fascinating part of the book. From libertarianism, Zhi Shang, 最有注意 he takes on the insight that civil and political rights have priority over social and economic rights. We don't have to agree with him, but at least he took on that insight and made it part of his theory. From utilitarianism. 功利主义，功利主义。He took on the insight that every person matters equally. We all count for the same. When we want to decide what's a good policy or just thing to do, everybody's voice, everybody's needs, everybody's interests has equal value. Nobody, just because if I happen to have been born into rich and powerful family. In most of societies in the past, we would say, "My voice matters more." But he said, Rawls, and of course, he other thinkers in this tradition saying, "No, everybody's voice matters equally." From Marxism, he took on the hugely important insight that rewarding people on the basis of natural talent, 天赋 Is unjustified from a moral point of view, just because somebody happens to have been born smart, doesn't mean that they should get more resources 
more money from society. Or just because somebody happens to have been born, well, not so smart or disabled, doesn't mean that they should get fewer resources when it comes to distributing goods in society, right? This is going to be a very central part of, of, of Rawls's theory of justice. You know, in Chinese we say an lao fen pei, right? According to contribution, we should reward people. Well, Rawls says no, that's wrong. Because some people have more, contribute more, just because they happen to have been born with more natural talent. Why should they get rewarded on the basis of this undeserved and unchosen trait, right? Okay, so now I think it's time to actually look at his theory in more detail and then we can evaluate it, right? Like any other great work in political theory, it's hugely influential but also controversial. Not everybody agrees with it. In fact, probably almost nobody agrees with all of it. Um, so what is his theory? Let's first look at what his theory is, and then we could look at the arguments he provided for his theory, and then we will discuss among ourselves whether we agree or disagree with his arguments. And as always, we have to give reasons for your views, right? Right? This is what makes political theory important, is that you have to provide arguments for your views. So this is his theory in a very from it's from his work on page 303 of a theory of justice, a very famous description, one sentence description of his theory. All social primary goods, liberty and opportunity, income and wealth, and the bases of self-respect are to be distributed equally unless an unequal distribution of any or all of these goods is to the advantage of the least favored. Now, least favored, sometimes you translate as bulija. Sometimes we say now roshe twenty. Right? That's a very common way of referring to the least favored. 基本上应该为弱势群体服务，他们的利益的，他们的利益是最重要的。Okay, okay? that's his basic view. What does this mean? Social primary goods. 自由、机会、收入、财富 uh, uh, what, what exactly do, does, do, do, does that mean? It's very interesting. It's, the language is a bit strange, but it's a very simple idea. No matter what our Rawls says, conception of the good life, maybe you want to be a policewoman, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a religious follower, that's fine. Remember, the liberals, they don't try to interfere too much with, peop with what people freely choose as their way of life. But no matter what your freely chosen way of life, you need certain things to realize your way of life, to make it happen, to make it real. And those things are not controversial. They're means to an end. We all need freedom, right? As much freedom as possible. You would be just irrational to say that, you know, I want to limit my freedom uh, unless there's a very good reason to do that, right? We all want as many opportunities as possible, right? right? We all want as much income as possible. If I say I can give you more salary for the same work, I mean, most rational people would say, great, that allows me to, to do more, that, to realize my conception of the good life. As well as 
Well, you can say money or property, and the basis of self-respect. This is a bit complicated to explain, but basically he just means that all of us need to have some self-respect. It's not just money that we want, we also want to have self-respect. And that is, no matter what our conception of the good life is, no matter what we want to do, we all want to have as much of these as possible. Therefore, all these goods, freedom, opportunity, money, should be distributed equally unless inequality helps the least favored, the least well off, the Ruosh or Twenty. Okay, that's his theory. It's, it's not a very complicated theory. It's just, but what's complicated is the arguments he develops for it. And of course, that's quite controversial. But sometimes these things conflict, right? Liberty and, and opportunity can conflict, right? Liberty and money can conflict. How do we rank those goods in cases of conflict? He will answer that. Well, this is another way of explaining his language, his theory in, in, in more ordinary language, right? This is from the Will Kimlicka work that I asked you to read. It's a very, very good translation in Chinese. It's unusual that we can say that, you know, this very complicated theory has been well translated, but the translation of the Will Kimlicka book is particularly excellent. I hope you've all read that. So, in English, we treat people as equals not by removing inequalities, but by removing those which disadvantage, which are harmful to somebody. Whoops. Uh, an inequality is allowed only if it benefits the least well off. So, inequality is not a problem per se. When we are not a problem per se. But it is not a problem Okay? The less well off have a kind of veto power over inequalities. Um, veto power um, means that if I am the least well-off person in a community, I can say I don't like this way of distributing goods. They have the power to decide, not those who have more money or power. I mean, this is a moral theory, right? From a moral point of view, those who are the least well-off, Ruosher Twenty, they're the ones who have the power to decide whether a distribution of things we care about, like freedom, opportunity, and money, is justified. Okay? They're the ones who have the power to decide from a moral point of view. Of course, not from a political or power point of view, but it's a normal, this is a theory about how the world ought to work. Not necessarily of, of how this, the world actually works, right? It's a critical theory. It allows us to provide a standard to think about how to improve society. Okay? Again, though, the various goods, freedom, opportunity, income, may all conflict. So we need to rank them. Okay? How do we do that? Well, let's look at Rawls's theory. So, now it goes from a general theory, right, to a more specific theory. What exactly is the special or that allows us to rank these goods? The first principle, each person is to have an equal right 
to the most extreme total system of equal basic liberties. The language is a little bit confusing, but basically it means that freedom is what matters most. And we should all have as much freedom as is possible, compatible with a system of liberty or freedom for everyone else. And then the second principle, less important, right? Is this social and economic inequalities are to be arranged so that they are both. This is not really talking about money or resources here. Think about it this way it's really talking about money, income, resources. They must be distributed so that they are to the greatest benefit of the least well off. Okay? And they must be attached to offices and positions open to all under conditions of fair equality of opportunity. What does this mean? Again, it's not very complicated. Equality of opportunity, when we are applying for jobs, everybody should be, have an equal opportunity to get the job. We can't say because you're a woman, you are less qualified, or because of your family background. Everybody should have equal opportunity to do what they want, including finding good jobs. Okay? But this might conflict with this. So which one has... Pri- well, so the first priority rule is that the, this principle is the most important. This is the most important principle or principle. The first principle, the principles of justice are to be ranked in order. Basically, you have to rank them. And liberty can only be restricted for the sake of liberty. This means you cannot restrict liberty for the sake of having, for example, more equality of income. I mean, this is quite controversial, right? I mean, at least here, in, in, if you think about in China, it's not widely held, this view. Basically, you cannot restrict liberty even if it leads to a more equal distribution of income. So, for example, if we have some people here who make you know, a lot of money and these people here are more poor and the only way to take or to distribute money from this group to that group is to restrict, for example, the freedom of speech or the freedom to participate in politics according to Rawls's theory of justice that is not morally acceptable. Okay, this is his theory. We can then let's see if we agree with it. The second priority rule, well, the first is that we cannot, the principle of efficiency cannot justify um, or the sum of advantages cannot justify um, is less important than the fair distribution of resources and fair opportunity is prior to difference principle. Okay, let, let's just say what it means. Chabia difference principle just means that a distribution should benefit the least well off. Okay? It's an inequality that is morally justified because it benefits the least well off. Let's look at two um, let's look at some different ways of ranking things in society. Um, this is Society A. Um, and this is this is money. 
and this is society B, and you have um, 50, 40, and 30. So this society is richer than this one, right? The total amount is 170. For here, it's um, 120, right? So if you care about efficiency, just G, to put it in this way, GDP, if you care about maximizing production in an overall society, which society is richer? This one is richer. But which society is better from a moral point of view? This one. Why? Because we have to look at the poorest group in each society. This one has more money, right, than this one. So, what, what it says here about efficiency, this is the efficiency. Society A is more efficient, but you cannot sacrifice the principle of justice that says we should look at the poorest, least well-off group in society. We cannot sacrifice this group to have more efficiency. Now again, this sounds a little bit unusual. Think about the Chinese history with economic development, right? In the period of economic reform in the early 1980s, you probably know Deng Xiaoping famously said uh, that we should allow for some people to get rich first, right? It was an emphasis on efficiency, right? And only later do we start to pay more attention to this. But that's inconsistent with Rawls's theory. We can talk about this. Maybe Rawls is wrong, right? And fair opportunity is prior to the difference principle. What this means is that this is important but we cannot sacrifice equality of opportunity to have this kind of society. If we have, if the only way to have this kind of society is to, for example, give more opportunities to men or to heterosexuals um, or to a certain ethnic group, then Rawls would say that is not justified. All citizens in a community should have equal opportunity to develop their own way of life. That is more important than having a distribution of money that benefits the least well-off group in society. Is Ming Ma clear enough?